This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome, listeners. This podcast is safe for first-time readers because it's made by a first-time reader. I'm your host, Danny, and I'm taking on the task of reading through this 15-book mega series. I'm joined by my co-host, Brett, a longtime fan who will act as my tour guide on this journey. This is our first official episode discussing the prologue, so let's get into it. Hey, Brett, how you doing? Okay, so I'm doing really good. I reread this prologue, I think four times today and listen to it on audiobook uh three times so i i hope i'm prepped for it how are you oh my goodness wow well i'm excited because the baby's asleep and i have a glass of wine and i see you filled it right to the very top yeah well that's the trick to having one glass of wine is (laughs) filling it right up and having a great big glass yeah and then lying about the having only one glass (laughs) well yeah also that (laughs) this is no judgment zone Yes, absolutely. So I'm really impressed. I can see the notes you've taken, and it looks like there's uh, actually quite a few pages, which is more than I thought you were reading. Yeah, and I read it once. I don't know why you're talking about reading it a bunch of times. I I just love this scene so much. We'll we'll talk. We'll get into the into why. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So lots of notes. I I think I took a fair amount of notes too. But I mean, um, there's a couple really exciting things going on in the Wheel of Time universe. I'm not sure if I told you yet. Okay. Uh, They're actually making a TV show. Which is really, really cool. On Netflix? No, not on Netflix. Amazon. Amazon, okay. Yeah, Amazon bought the rights, and I think they're co-producing it with Sony. So uh, they're, like, from what I've heard, in production now for it, uh, because Amazon bought it last year in 2018. And they're actually, they have a script. So are they, like, filming? Um, I I don't know if they're doing actual filming yet, but they have the script, and I think they're working on casting right now, and they're probably doing some of those pre-shots and everything. Wasn't there already a really shitty TV show about these books? No. You are thinking of a series called, uh, it is The Sword of Truth, I believe, Uh, and there was a TV show called Legend of the Seeker that did horribly. It was not well produced. It was just... So this isn't going to be that? Because when you say TV show, that's what I picture. I hope not. And I think everybody can agree we, we hope it's nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Amazon is going to mess it up because Game of Thrones obviously is coming to an end. And I think that they're trying to compete on that level. So I'm well, assuming sweet. Yeah, I'm assuming Amazon's going to throw just a ton of money at this. I, I really hope they do anyways. So um, I've heard mixed reviews in the community about some people are like, not excited about it. Yeah, well, obviously, they're not going to be able to... Like, the Game of Thrones didn't stick exactly to the books. Yes. Well, and I mean, also, the series has yet to be finished, and who yes. knows if it'll ever be finished. <laughs> so they just sort of had to make it up as they went along. Yeah, so I can I, I understand the hesitation, because even when you read a book and then it gets made into a movie... like It's even, never as good. It's never as good, but I'm just really excited that after all this time, we're going to get new Wheel of Time content... And I'm, I'm ready for it. And I'm excited, so yes. Open-minded. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. You're optimistic. Yeah. Well, the alternative is is nothing, right? So I guess so. I'd rather have something than nothing, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> especially when it comes to this. All right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So how are you feeling about getting into the prologue? I'm feeling good about it. I thought it was really um, Confusing? interesting. No, it wasn't. Well, I'm okay. I'm, I don't want to lie. It was a little confusing, but I think... I think I got it. I think I, I think I understood it. Good. I'm really glad. So just so you know where I'm coming from with this prologue, I think that this prologue is easily my top 10 favorite scenes in all the entire series. The entire series? Whole series, all 50 books. This prologue, I love it. Every time I read it, every time I reread the series, I probably read it a couple of times and I get chills every single time. Really? It's so exciting. Love oh my it. goodness. So basically it's all downhill from here. Is what you're saying. <laughs> Pretty much. We've it already just gets... <laughs> read the best part, and now it's over, and there's nothing to look forward top, to. Top 10 of the best parts. Okay, so so there's like nine other really good parts in the series. <laughs> Scattered throughout 15,000 <laughs> page books? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have to be excited about that, right? Like. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm excited to hear you out. I mean, like, yeah, it was good. It was interesting. But I'm excited to hear your viewpoints. I can't tell you my viewpoints on it until we get to the end of the series. You'll, we'll, oh. we'll, piece, we'll piece it together. Okay, well, I hope you can tell me some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But right. not, not yet, not yet. Okay, well, I mean, like, we can get into it. So I opened the book. I saw a prologue. And then I thought it was interesting because right away there's a picture of a wheel. Which was one of your theories from last 
time. There are wheels. There are wheels and they're important. Yeah. Yes. Well, okay, so there's a wheel and then there's an infinity snake. Yeah, like eating its own tail. Yeah, kind an of thing. infinity snake. Infinity so snake. I don't really have any theories about the infinity snake yet. But that he might like wheels because he's kind of like intertwined. Well, and I mean like who says it's a he? Or she. Or she snake. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we get. And then it's called Dragon Mount. And I wrote down, ooh, dragons. Dragons. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. So we actually uh, start our scene here with the remnants of an earthquake. There's a palace all fucked up. Totally. Totally fucked up palace. And there's aftershocks. There's tremors. Scorch marks on the wall. Yeah. Ash everywhere. Just total... Total chaos. Whatever. I already had to look up what a word meant. And I wish I was reading this on a uh, Kobo so I could just (laughs) click on it to see. But I had to literally Google it. Which word? The word freezes. Frizes? Oh, yeah. Freezes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a band of sculpted decorations. Yeah. It's like the things I think, aren't they on the walls? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was like ash settling on them or Mm -hmm. something. And I didn't, I don't know the word. So I already, first paragraph in, don't know a word. So that's great. Uh, Fancy palace artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I looked it up. (laughs) It's all good. Yeah. So our scene goes on and it's intense right away. I wrote, holy shit, there's dead people everywhere. So this not just men, but I said the dead, women and the children I too. I said dead people. Absolutely. Yeah. So everyone's dead, <laughs> and uh, this must have been one hell of an earthquake. Okay. Because that's Every, crazy. Everyone's dead. <laughs> everyone's dead. <laughs> and then uh, we meet our first character, Luz Theron Telamon. Really good on pronunciation. That's correct. Is it? It is. Yeah. Okay. Luz Theron. Yeah. All right, Luz Theron. I also really like the uh, middle name. Why? Well, well, no, no, no. I just like introducing characters with, you know, okay. with three names. Okay. It's super fancy. Okay. I like that. Um, so I, I used to pronounce, Lu- I thought it was Lewis for a long, long time, but it's Luz. Luz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a uh, pronunciation. There's like a glossary at the end of the book. I probably wouldn't recommend reading through the no, entire glossary, well, but <laughs> they, give, they give pronunciation guides for some I of the see. words. Liz, you're yeah. my pronunciation guides. Thank you. <laughs> so you'll help me out. <laughs> All right. We're introduced to our first character, Luz. Still more aftershocks. And he's walking around. He's looking for his love, Elenia. Ilyena. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he asks where everyone is hiding as he's stepping over dead bodies. Like this, some gruesome game of hide and seek. <laughs> and okay. I just thought, like, what the fuck is going on? He's like, where is everybody? And he's ignoring all these dead people. And just stepping over dead bodies. Stepping over dead bodies. And he goes, where are you, my wife? And it, these must be some fucked up people to just continue their game of hide and seek while this wreckage has gone on. Okay, so that's how you're feeling about this scene so far? Yeah, these people must be nuts. <laughs> a little bit, right? Yeah, crazy. So, I mean, they go on. Like, they're crazy. There's a big earthquake, and they're just continuing their game. Then something really important happens. Yep. And we hear about how there's a symbol on his cloak. The symbol. Ooh. Yeah, there's a big (laughs) symbol. And the only reason I know about this symbol is because when we were looking for artwork for this podcast, this is what we use. (laughs) Yes, and I said this was an important symbol in the series, but I did not tell you anything else. Yeah. I just said... Half white, half black, symbol. Trust me. Big it, deal. It's important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so just to get a visual, so it does look like a yin-yang, right? Yeah. The symbol without the little dots on yes. either side. Uh, black on top, white on bottom. That's important. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of the symbol that we have going on here, and he's wearing it uh, on his, uh, like a pendant, pretty much. Oh, I thought it was like a symbol, like a patch sewn into his cloak. Symbol on his cloak? Yeah. Yeah, it could be a patch. Like that's what I, or like embroidered almost. That's how mm-hmm. I picture it. If he, like if he has other other cloaks, they all might have this symbol. That's how I thought about mm-hmm. it. Okay, makes sense. Like a little insignia. Yeah. So that's important. And I'm just going to tuck that little nugget of information deep in that brain. And we'll come back to it later. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right, so he sees a mirror, Mm -hmm. finds his reflection, and starts laughing like a deranged person. Like a crazy person. Like completely (laughs) crazy. And then I start thinking, does this dude have a brain injury from the earthquake? And that would kind of explain some of his actions, right? Stepping over dead bodies. Yeah, he's got something wrong. Okay. A concussion, 
brain injury. So like he hasn't been, always been this way. No, but... like he's been injured mm. in this earthquake. Okay, I can see that. Like if you took a spill, right, hit your head really hard, and then kind of carry on, that would explain some of the actions. Okay, yeah. so then another man enters. So enters, but this is the first part of a little bit of hint of magic that we get. Oh. So in the book, he says, behind him, the air rippled, shimmered, solidified into a man. Oh, I completely missed that. So yeah, he didn't just enter the room. The air ripples, he shimmers, and then he solidifies. Whoa. Magic. Like he's Waterman. Ex- sh- I don't know who Waterman is, but sure. Well, no, that's a made-up guy. <laughs> oh, that's okay. He, <laughs> he like shivers into existence. So we'll nickname him Waterman for yeah. <laughs> We'll have to he already has that. lots of other nicknames already. <laughs> we do get a bunch of name drops here. Yeah, a lot. Okay, so um, as I'm reading this in particular, yeah. I start feeling like I'm reading Shakespeare. And I had to reread it a couple times to get my brain adjusted to how this writing is going to go. Yes, this chapter I've always felt uh, is sort of poetic, right? He does repetition a lot. That's beautiful. Very, well, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful way to describe it. It is. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's fantastic poetic. writing. I like that. Yeah. Now he references, so this man who enters calls Luz Theron the Lord of the Morning. Yes. So how about that for a nickname? It's a good one. It's pretty cool. I, I'm more of like Lord of uh, the Night Owl. Okay. If you're going to give me a nickname. <laughs> like I wouldn't exactly be like the best morning person. So isn't Night Owl like when you like to stay up really late? Yeah, that's it. That's the one. That's me. <laughs> Well, not so much anymore because of the baby. You're looking at me Back like, it. oh, yeah, sure. Should baby. I call you up for lying just really hard? Because you like you like your sleep. But yeah, but that's because I'm working and have a baby. But Back I, in the day. I really am more of a night person than a morning person. you got to <laughs> give me that one. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Okay, so then he says, does the taint have you already? This guest says to lose. Mm-hmm. And that gave me some sort of clue that... Maybe it's not a brain injury. Maybe he has some sort of something done to him. So some sort. Maybe he's got some sort of Alzheimer's. Like a tainted mind, almost. Yeah. Like does okay. the taint have you? Like maybe he's got some kind of plague, like the Black Plague. That like makes you go crazy. Yeah. Okay. Something like he's got some kind of disease. Sure. And then at some point, Luz references. Okay. Now you gotta. Give me credit for this one. Sure. Shaitan. That's correct. Shaitan. Shaitan. Yes. Okay, so Lou says something about Shaitan. You know what's interesting? What? Shaitan is an Arabic word. What does it mean? The devil. Oh. Yes. Well, I guess that makes sense. Also close to Satan, if you look at it that way, too. Oh, it is not spelt like that. Not spelt. But yeah, but pronunciation-wise, I can see that. Yeah. Okay, and then Luz is a little bit reprimanded Mm -hmm. and says, don't say his name. And it reminds me of another Dark Lord whose name you also... Aren't supposed to say. (laughs) Must not be named. Harry Potter. He who must not be named. So do you think that Voldemort shows up in this chapter or later on? Yeah, I'm just waiting for Voldy. (laughs) I'm waiting for Voldemort. Um, He who must not be named. Yeah, so he says it's dangerous. Yeah, it's a dangerous name, which makes sense if it's the devil. Now that you say that, and I'm thinking maybe it is. Okay. Because it's the Dark Lord. Um, So then this guest starts yelling at Luz for having this disease Mm -hmm. and is really pissed off that he can't remember anything. Yeah. And he keeps on saying, you know, remember something. You must remember something. And that's a big deal. You know, one really funny thing about uh, what we get here a little bit, this man who enters uh, calls Lewis Theron a light-blinded idiot. So it's kind of like swearing in PG-13, right? Light-blinded idiot. Um, It's like a, you know, funny way to curse. Curse, word, curse words Light aside. blinded idiot. See, the way I interpret that, so it's kind of a little bit Star Wars-esque, sure. which is like the light side and the dark the side. The light and the dark side, okay. So the way I see it is he's a light blinded idiot. Like, it's like good versus evil. Yeah, <laughs> like he's some kind of moron who only sees the good in things. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and I mean, I guess with the way they're talking, that makes sense too. One little fact you might want to tuck away in your brain too. So a little bit earlier in this paragraph, uh, Lewis Theron asks the guest, have you the voice, stranger, voice being capitalized? Oh. 
which was very specific. Oh my goodness. I feel like I took some pretty in-depth notes and there's still so much that I missed. So yeah, so a couple things you want to point out. He Robert Jordan uses the capitalization of letters to emphasize some things. Okay. So voice is capitalized and he says it will soon be time for the singing, which is also capitalized, the S in singing. Sounds creepy. Yeah. So maybe more magic just to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I did have a prediction that there would be some magic. You did say there might be magic. Yes, so I'm pretty much right about everything. Pretty much. I think we can uh, put that on a record. Okay, (laughs) Okay, so then we learn that this guy's name is Elan. 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 Morin. Tedronai. 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 That's what I was going to say. Yeah, pronunciation in this series is uh, unique because every single person has probably their own way to pronounce these words. So, I mean, even if we pronounce it wrong, I mean, it is what it is. You yeah. Really... I mean, when I read, quite honestly, I don't even read the word if I can't pronounce it. You I just look visual, at it, you see it. I recognize it, and I move on. Absolutely. So, so um, as, as close as we can get. So. Yeah. And again, with the three names. Yeah. You know, pretty fancy. Fancy. Fancy, fancy. So then we also find out he is also known as. The Betrayer of Hope. So Lord of the Morning sounds pretty cool, but Betrayer of Hope, cooler? Yeah, way cooler, but darker. Darker, okay. Way darker. The Betrayer of Hope? Like, hope is all that is good in the world. It is faith embodied, and he is the betrayer of that. So do you think that they nicknamed each other, or they nicknamed themselves? Or, like, can you give yourself a nickname? Oh, man. Is that is that cool to do? Well, I mean, like, I gave myself the nickname of Danny. Like, when I... <laughs> <laughs> Like when I play soccer and I start on a new team or something, I introduce myself as Danny. It's easier to say on the field. But that's like the shortened version of your name. That's not like a totally, you know, off the cuff nickname of something totally random. Right. So I can't just be something ridiculous. Yeah. It's not like the Luz Luz there and Telemann's friends are just calling him Luz for short. (laughs) They're like Lord of the Morning. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that... Others gave them their names. Okay. I would say because of their actions. Ah, because of actions. Okay. Because of actions, others have uh, deemed them fitting for... Like, You'd have to do something pretty terrible, probably, to get betrayer of hope as... Well, yeah, you probably have to betray hope. <laughs> Realistically. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. Okay. Okay, so then another nickname comes up. For... And Luz is called dragon super cool which is so cool like realistically if i could have a nickname it would be dragon that, that's a good one it's a cool name it's a good one but Luz doesn't like this name yeah because elon says unlike you i embrace the name so clearly elon is he likes the fact that he's called the betrayer of hope big he's dark proud. evil you know yeah. also you're gonna be so mad at me the amount that i reference harry potter that's okay <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna... you know, it's something you can connect to <laughs> And I'm okay with that. But you know, Voldemort, who gave himself that nickname, by the way. Oh, not the coolest kid. Not the coolest kid. He didn't have friends, did he? I don't know. Is he like you? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. No, he embraces the betrayer of hope, I think, because maybe he's proud of that. He likes being, you know, on his dark side. He likes having that power. He likes being... Sort of the bad dude. And Luz Theron doesn't like being the dragon. Obviously. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that even means. Yeah. So yeah, he doesn't like it. But he is called Kinslayer. And then I think to myself, was that dead woman he stepped over Eliana? Yes. Did I say that? I can't remember. Iliana. Iliana. And then I remember, because I remember specifically a woman, a blonde woman was described... Mm. And he's looking everywhere for her. Calling for her. Calling for her. And then he gets called the Kinslayer. So this is like a bad news bear situation where (laughs) (laughs) being called the Kinslayer means you killed your Your kin. kin. Right? Your your family. I had to reread it because, you know, I mean, we're obviously in a little bit deep with Game of Thrones right now. Mm -hmm. And there's a king. Kingslayer. Slayer. So I had Mm. to reread it to make sure that I got that right. That it wasn't Kingslayer. Kingslayer. But Kinslayer definitely means he slayed his own kin. 
He killed yes. his own family. And so if he's looking everywhere for his wife, he's definitely brain damaged by some disease. And now he's being called Kinslayer. And this literally just happened because Elon says after this day, men will call you Kinslayer. So all this wreckage oh. just happened now. Whoa. Okay. That's a big so deal. So these, like, these are like fresh bodies on the ground. Well, yeah, because it said that she was bloody. Yes. So I do definitely remember that. And there's a reference again to the golden-haired woman's body. Uh, shifted when the floor shook. So they're just, he's highlighting the fact that this golden-haired woman yes. is probably... Definitely. definitely. Probably, <laughs> definitely, Eliana. So there's definitely a long history between these two because Elan mm -hmm. keeps trying to smack talk. A lot of smack talk from Elon. Like a lot of it considering that this guy's basically got Alzheimer's. He's brain damaged and has no idea what the fuck is happening. And he's just smack talking him like crazy. Yeah, also considering the fact that uh, in this next paragraph, Elon is smack talking, but it's clear that Louis Theron has bested him several times. Right? So he says, yeah. you humbled me in the Hall of Servants. Right. Right? Capital S, obviously, on the Hall of Servants. You defeated me at the gates of Perrin Deeson. Ooh. Right? So it's like, you've beat me a bunch of times. But guess what? I beat you this time. <laughs> Even though you're crazy. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> right? He's like super into this. Because yeah. Luz basically keeps ignoring him. Like he has some kind of concussion and doesn't even really know he's there and keeps talking. It's like short-term memory loss. Yeah. Like just, it's like... almost like Elan likes that though. It's almost mm. like he can keep um, telling him, hey man, I know you don't like being called dragon, but guess what? You're the Kinslayer after this day. Ha <laughs> ha, guess what I did to you? Yeah. In yeah. some There's way. There's like pride that he's beating him. Yeah. Mm. And you know, what's interesting is I didn't really pick up on a lot of that when I was reading it on my own. Okay. Because it's not immediately clear that all of this has to do with Elan. Yes. So yeah. so that's interesting. So then he keeps talking about, or sorry, Luz keeps talking about Ela, Elena. Ileana. 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 Man, this Ileana. is, this yep. is going to be so tough. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets yeah. better. <laughs> I believe you. I'm just going to start giving them, I'm going to start giving them nicknames. Like the dead blonde. The dead blonde. Okay. So. <laughs> so insensitive. I know. She just died. <laughs> you know, I don't really have a connection to her. I never really knew her very well. <laughs> so so the, there's a there's a couple of other just before we go on there's also yeah. a couple of um, hinting at names that Elon talks about so he states once you stood first among the servants capital S which is interesting because when you think of servants you don't think of man you are so in depth in this Brett you got this I have the upper hand because I've read through it but <laughs> it's all just in the words right now yeah Right. Absolutely. Okay. Once you were the ring of Tamerlin, we don't really know at all about that, sat in the high seat, all capitalized, uh, and you summoned the nine rods of dominion. Sounds pretty cool. Sounds like big accomplishments. Yeah, it sounds like he's done a lot, and it's almost like this betrayer of hope guy wanted to be able to almost like accomplish the same things, There's but like he a never little, got like, to. The jealousy. It's like ego yeah. yeah, definitely. That's what's definitely happening here. So then Elan says something very interesting. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's a pity that your sisters aren't here, here to heal you. Capital S. Oh. Capital sisters. So not real sisters. Probably not sister's sister, but like. Okay, so like some healers who possibly. can heal. Probably some magic healing because what seems to be the issue with Luz right now is that he probably... Now that we've gotten really into this, this whole mm -hmm. this whole brain injury uh, business, it doesn't seem that it was due to trauma. It seems magical. Magical trauma. Like a magic trauma that's injured that's injured his brain. Okay. In some way. So and if his sisters were here, maybe they could. They heal. could heal him, and he said it's a pity because. I think Elan wants him to remember. Mm -hmm. He seems frustrated that Louis Theron doesn't remember. Yeah, and it's so. almost like he's ignoring him and just going on about his day looking for his wife. It's like, pay attention to me. I'm here now. <laughs> yes. And yeah. just like, wait a minute. You're really fucked up. Let's get you healed. So then he does some satanic healing on him. More like shaitanic. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Titanic. I'm going to use that one. We should write that one down. <laughs> okay. So, and it hurts him. Yeah. So more, more magic, right? More magic. And it's, and you know what? I'm going to brag a little over here because it's like the force magic. 
How so? Because he uses his hands. Okay. So he's like using his hands to control something. It's not like he's casting spells with wands. He doesn't have a wand, yeah. So this is what I said. I think the magic is more force-like. Like it's okay. through the energy. Gotcha. Rather than let's cast some spells. Like say a magic word and then a, a spell right. fires off. Yeah, it's kind of like he uses his magic energy to magic satanic heal this guy. Gotcha. Okay. So it really hurts him. Um, and not just really hurts him. It seems that it is just incredible pain. It, by the description, a scream came from his depths, a scream he could not stop. Fire seared his marrow. Acid rushed along his veins. Like, that sounds pretty intense. Yeah, that's hurting. Ouch. Like, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Sounds like a lot's happened to him today. Oh, man. Okay, so then after he's healed, first thing that happens... Seems he remembers. He sees the dead blonde woman, and it's his wife, and I write, ah I'm right! You were right, ah yes. So blonde woman is Ilyena. Right. Who and then, just died. Yeah, and I found it interesting. He says, light help me, mm -hmm. just like somebody might say, God help me. So light is the force of... Positive, good, God energy. And Shaitan is... Satan. Satan. Dark. Dark, bad. Dark Lord Voldemort energy. Gotcha. So, so it's light versus so dark. So this is a light versus dark situation. Okay. That's what we've got going here. So the Lord of Dark... Not just the Lord of the Dark. The Great Lord of the Dark. The Great Lord of the Dark I don't think the Lord of the Dark would like... her. <laughs> oh, he can save her. There's a lot of reference here that is mirrored in Star Wars stuff. Because Anakin went super dark because all he wanted to do was save Padme. Because they promised that she, he kept seeing visions of her dying and he was promised that they could save her if, if he turn. just went to the dark side. But do you go to the dark side? Well, yes. he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it didn't really turn out that good didn't for him. Didn't turn out so well. Although he did, have, he did rain for a lot of years. That's true. He had a lot of power for a long time. Yeah. So, and he was pretty old when he died. So, I mean, if you're going for, you know, un <laughs> I mean, uncontested I, power. I mean, I guess. So, if you serve the great Lord of the Dark, okay, not Lord of the Dance, which is what my writing <laughs> sort of looks like here. I almost said that. <laughs> so, it's not Lord of the Dance. Uh, Lord of the Dark. So, if you serve him, maybe she can be saved. So, then Luz doesn't fall for this. Because I think now he's got his memory back. Okay. And he knows what's going on. He's lucid. And he, he clearly knows this guy. He too knows now. this guy. And he calls Elan the betrayer. Mm -hmm. the Referencing the betrayer of hope. Right. Betray. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it might be a different kind of... Never mind. I they don't. only have limited nicknames for each other, so... <laughs> okay. You can shorten it. So, he says, For ten years, your foul master has racked the world. Ten years. Yeah. And then... I wrote this out because it sounds really important. It does. Okay. Fool. Mm -hmm. Beginning of time, you and I have fought a thousand battles with the turning of the wheel and a thousand times a thousand and we will fight until time dies and the shadow is triumphant. So this just isn't some sort of conflict for the last 10 years, which is interesting that Luz Theron in his lucidness, yes. from what we can tell, thinks it's a 10 year battle. Yeah. But... Elon, betrayer of hope, is saying, no, not 10 years, literally for all eternity. Forever. Light From versus before, dark. in the future, for now, forever, we are entangled in this wheel of time. Ah. Uh, and that's uh, why there's 15 books. Right. <laughs> all right. Shoot. <laughs> Dude. Okay. It's um, a long time. Yeah. So, and he ends with until the shadow is triumphant because if the dark side is completely triumphant and completely wins that means time is dead okay that's my that's what i take out of this so like if the dark lord wins then time ends well he says or... we'll fight until time dies and the shadow is triumphant okay so i mean it's... that's a that's a good theory so if the shadow happens to be triumphant, that means the fight will end and time will stop. So on a positive note, that means that the shadow has not yet won because time's not Well, dead. I guess it depends what side you're on. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not looking good okay, for Okay, fine. <laughs> fine, I'll root for the good guy. No, you can root for the bad guys. That's okay. So at this point, 
um, Luz is implored to remember, mm-hmm. don't fuck with the Great Lord of Dark. Pretty much. Essentially. Remember your futile attack on the Great Lord of the Dark. Yeah. Just apparently, Luz Theron attacked the Great Lord of the Dark. Sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, because I mean, now all, his whole family's dead. So he's called the Kinslayer. And so apparently, if you oppose Shaitan, mm-hmm. he makes you kill everyone you know and love. So, so you're firmly on board that Luz Theron killed everyone there as the Kinslayer? Well, he looks around and he sees his own sons and daughters. And it makes me think like... Man, how many kids does this guy have? Or are they like hypothetical sons and daughters? Was he like the ruler? Like the sisters in quotations? Yeah, something okay. like that. So because then he remembers and he can see all of the dead people. He can see them all s- spread around everywhere. It's very graphic. Mm-hmm. It talks about them being thrown around basically like rag dolls. Mm-hmm. And they're all bloody and it's terrible. And he sees his own sons and daughters. Mm-hmm. And so at this point, as Luz is realizing that I think either he has killed them or his actions have caused them to be dead. And you can imagine like just the the trauma that you feel. Yeah. And then Alain starts laughing. He thinks it's hilarious. (laughs) Kind of a dick move. Yeah. He thinks it's so funny. (laughs) And this is a, this is one of my favorite paragraphs here uh, in this prologue is when Elon is pretty much taking all responsibility and just putting it on Luz Theron. So he says, What hand slew Ilyana Sunhair Kinslayer? Not mine, not mine. What hand struck down every life that bore a drop of your blood? Everyone who loved you, everyone you loved. Not mine, Kinslayer, not mine. So very poetic in saying, It wasn't my hand. I was, didn't do it. It was your fault. You did it. You fucked with the bad guy. Now everyone you love's dead, and it's your fault, not mine. Ha <laughs> ha. Exactly. So, uh, pretty pretty terrible. Because now that Luz Theron has some clarity in what's happened, you can just imagine like he he would just go. Yeah. You would go crazy all over again. Well, yeah, because at this point, Luz uh, can't take it anymore, mm-hmm. and he reaches out to the quote the true source. Yes. To the tainted. Sidon. 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 And he traveled capital with a T. capital T. I even wrote capital T. Yes, that one I, that one I got. So we can kind of see the magic system. And being I formed. and then I said like a port key. Oh, like an old boot in the field. <laughs> like okay. A boot in the field. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'll slow down with the Harry Potter, <laughs> but I just can't. I, just... I, I bet that you won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that bet. But seriously, it's sort of like that. He reaches out to something. And travel somewhere. True. That's true. It's it's magic. He's moving locations. And... An important note, he reaches out to tainted Sidin. So the taint... Yes. That was referenced earlier. Yes. Elon was talking about, are you tainted already? So he is. It would seem that way. Yeah. So he goes to be alone. So he teleports pretty much. Basically. Yeah. yeah he port keys there. And he goes to be alone, and he was still touching the side in, which is the half male power that drove the universe, that turned the wheel of time. Uh, so in this universe, we have the wheel of time. Yes. That is pretty much powered by what's called the true source. Yes. The male half of it being Right, and now I'm in. hoping for some equality here, and I'm hoping that the other half... Is female? Is female. I guess we'll have to read and find out. Yeah, but I mean, like, come on. It better be, or else I'm done. I'm done Um, reading. Okay. If it's male and then, like, snake (laughs) or something, like male half Half and snake half, 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 like, yeah, reptile half or something, then I'm out. Okay. If there's no reference to the, like, female half of the universe, then I'm out. I'm done. I'll give you that. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So he could feel the tainted counterstroke. The oily taint fouling its surface. Very descriptive. Oh my gosh. Well, it's it's a good, it's an important reference because it is referenced that it's the taint that doomed the world. Yeah, it really is. It doomed the world because he could match the creator. Yeah. So in the book, it says, because in his pride... So in Luz Theron's pride, he had believed that men could match the creator, could mend what the creator had made, and they had broken. So clearly Luz Theron had broken something, thought he was good enough, was prideful enough to fix it, 
and pretty much everything went to shit because of that. Okay, so yeah, so his pride, so the true source and the one power is basically equal to like the whole energy force yes. in the world. Yeah, so that's okay. what drives So the that's universe. quite intense. Mm-hmm. It's all very intense. He's feeling out all the feels, super in, invested in this whole thing. So the heavens get real pissed off, basically destroy everything. And our buddy Luz gets turned into a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> in summary, in short, yes. <laughs> So the heavens, <laughs> this is important though, the, oh, heaven, okay. the heavens don't get pissed. I knew you were, really? Louis Theron gets pissed. Okay. So the air turns to fire uh, and the bolt that struck from the heavens would have seared and blinded any eye that's seen it. The heavens, from the heavens it came blazed through Louis Theron, but it is because of this. It is it is Louis Theron who's, who's making this happen. Okay. He's not being smited by God. By like, oh, well I just thought maybe, mm-hmm. so my understanding okay reading through it seemed like because you know how he'd been talking to the light light save me things like that mm-hmm. i thought maybe it was like the light force was like you done fucked up and then was like boom volcano <laughs> volcano man yeah. yeah no he's not a me- he just turned into a volcano he just turns into a volcano yeah okay which is what it sort of seemed like to me yeah in a sense it definitely reads like that so it basically just destroys everything it does so. Now, so much power here is being brought into Luz Theron. Again, he does turn into a mountain, into a volcano. Well, he turns into a mountain that spews lava. What do you call that? Yeah, and the Brett? lava, it, everything just gets <laughs> literally ripped apart. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, old buddy Betrayer of Hope appears back in the scene mm-hmm. and tells that volcano that he cannot escape that easily. <laughs> so, nice try, volcano. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now... So an important note here. So when when uh, Luz Theron travels, he travels to an area where there's just a straight, broad river. And when this mountain, when he pretty much commits suicide, blows himself up into a mountain, rips the the earth apart, the river is displaced. So the mountain raises, and beside the mountain, the river splits. Not into two rivers, oh. into a river that bends around an island. So now oh. there's a flat island. That's where Elon shows up. Okay. He's He teleports onto the island where the river bends around it. Okay. Does everything matter? That's the important part of the series is every, every sentence in this series... Matters. Matters. So... Now we're into prophecies. No, well, hold on. Not yet. Oh, not yet? Okay. Elon says, it will not be done until the end of time. And so he's like... Hey, listen, you can't escape. It doesn't matter if you turn into a volcano. It's still going to go on. This will not be done. The end. I win this round. Ding, uh, ding. This round. Yeah, that's okay. what it seems like. Yeah, definitely. And he calls him Dragon again, which I think is fitting because now he's spewing lava. Dragon's spit fire. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we have these passages. Yeah. Or are they more like prophecies? Well, they could be prophecies. They could be passages. uh, They could be history. At this point, we don't really know. Yeah, we just don't really know 100% yet. Okay. So they are from unknown authors in the fourth age. Mm -hmm. We know that for sure. And in summary, the first one here says, it's the dragon's fault that the world went to shit. (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah, that that summarizes it really well. Dragon's the one to blame. Yeah, basically that's all. Yeah, basically description of how the world got torn apart, right? Everything's terrible, Uh, especially like the the living envy the deadline. So it's really bad. And the one thing they remember above all else is that it's the dragon's fault. So I think there's going to be some definite hate on the dragon now. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And the second passage here... Uh, Talks about the Prince of the Morning and also talks about the dragon being reborn, but it's a little less clear and I'm not quite sure what it's talking about. Okay, so just to summarize it. So the beginning, it starts by saying that the dark is laying heavy on the land. So we know that the world got torn apart. uh, So obviously the dark one, right? Bad things are happening all over the place. And that's pretty much what's going down in the world right now. But the next part is talking about how people are you know, crying out to the creator, to God, to whatever you want to call it. And they're asking for the promised one to be born again, 
right? The one born of the mountain. Okay. Yeah, so thinking about who is who died on the mountain, right? Who's going to be born on the mountain. So um, the entire concept of the books being the wheel of time, it's the cyclical nature right. of the universe. So, okay. Um, the Prince of the Morning, right? We we heard Luz Theron. Referred to as Lord of the Morning. Exactly. So we can assume it's going to be him, yes. right? Or something like that. And then uh, it says, it ends by saying, let the dragon ride again on the winds of time. Again, very poetic. Right. Yes. Okay. So we do know that those were written in the Fourth Age. Mm-hmm. And I think then... That means that going forward, it's after the fourth age. I, I mean, again, it's we don't really have enough information because we oh. don't even know that these events took place in the fourth age yet, right? These these could have been written a long time after the fact, or they could have been written at the same time. It, it's it's really hard to say. So I guess we're just gonna have to read and find out. I guess so. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the fun. That's kind of the point here. Yeah. The next page is a map. There is a map, yes. And I, I love maps because I'm such a visual person. Yes, maps are so good. So maps are good. So I'm a fan of maps specifically from um, Game of Thrones. Okay. Because that's a complicated world. Yes. So I love maps. So I decided to take a look at this map. And then I saw a little drawing of a mountain. And it's called Dragon Mount. And I went, oh, duh. So, the prologue where it says Dragon Mount. It's called Dragon Mount because he's Dragon Mount. He's a dragon and now he's a mountain. It's Dragon Mount. Boom! Roasted. Done. (laughs) (laughs) So, we know now that Dragon Mount is an actual mountain in this world and we have a location for it. So, it's not just some mystical place. Like, it actually exists. Yeah. And we got to see the in-depth creation of said mountain. Yeah. And it exists... In the world that we're about to go into. Okay, so what are your thoughts on what you've read so far? I know that I've said I've read this book before. Yeah. And I've at least read this. I've at least read the first couple chapters, if not a little bit more. Okay. I have no memory of this. I have memory of reading this book. And I expected my memory to be jogged. About something? Do you think that you just accidentally skipped the prologue the first time you read through it? You know, Is that possible? Yeah, it's, it's completely possible. Like you look to the map, right? And you're like, oh, I'll just start reading after the map because it says chapter one. You know, 16-year-old Danielle might have done that. It's possible. I might have. Okay. So, very interesting. Very in-depth. That's the end of the prologue. And you know what I'm most excited about? What are you so... Tell me. You're most excited about everything. I am the most excited about everything, but I'm especially the most (laughs) excited about the fact that in the TV show, I really, really, truly hope they start the series with this scene. Because every time... it would be stupid not to. They could go so many different ways, though. I guess. Right? Okay, well, this is the only thing I've read, but it would be (laughs) stupid not to. Of course that's what they're going to do. I know. It's such a it's such a teaser. It's such in my mind this scene plays out so dramatically. You know what's interesting that you say it as a teaser? It's a teaser. It's a teaser, but it's literally all I know. Yeah, so far. It doesn't seem like yeah, it's sort of like what's the palate? It's like my my appetizer, I suppose, before we get into it, but but here we are. So prologue's done. Yeah. So, um I'm just wondering if Every time we meet somebody, they're also going to have three names. <laughs> and they're all going to be terribly difficult to pronounce. Yes. And then are they also going to have other nicknames that we have to remember who they are? We'll just start like a like a list. Yeah, I should start a list. We'll get a bulletin board. We'll put down like every name and every nickname that they yeah, give each other. Yeah, and then I'm going to just have to start giving people my own nicknames so that when we're going through this i can actually (laughs) pronounce what's going on just remember what i said every sentence in this series is important yeah i'm just gonna have to you know do that thing where you reread after you're done yeah the the first thing you do after you read the series (laughs) is you reread the series no the first thing you do as you read this series is debrief after every chapter with (laughs) someone who's already read it 10 times and i won't have to do it again (laughs) but you'll want to read it again Okay, well, I guess I'll find out. Yeah, I guess you will. All right. Well, thanks for this session, Brett. Yeah, it's going to start to feel more like a therapy session, I think, (laughs) as we uh, 
as we progress here, but Where absolutely. I need to talk out my feelings. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> it will be. On the chapter one. Thanks for tuning into this episode of The Wheel Weaves. We would really appreciate if you liked anything we said to give us a rating on iTunes or Spotify or Google Play. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to tell all of your friends to listen in. If you'd like more information, check us out on Instagram at The Wheel Weaves Podcast and on Twitter at wheel underscore weaves. Thanks to Audionautics.com for the music and a special thanks to all of you listening. We really do appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you next time.